Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm going to give you a little quick tour of our barn and such today. Maybe the silo room and the uh, calf barn. Um, but I'm going to show you over there is the basement for our new house. They started digging last week, late last week. Today is Sunday, um, so they were out Thursday and poured footings on Friday, and then the electrical company come and put up new, kind of connected uh, um, light wires to the pole down there and put a new pole across over there to me. So hopefully next week I should have a basement. Um, they're scheduled to come put the house on mid-January. Um, so I thought I'd give you a quick tour of the barn, calf barn. I don't know if you guys have seen pictures of it, but yeah, there it is there. It doesn't look like much inside anymore, but um, I'll just kind of give you a little rundown of it. <clears throat> um, Dad quit milking cows in two, two, January 31st of 2000. And it hasn't had a out cow in it since so as you see it's kind of uh, probably overrun with stuff um, this was our calf barn and then uh, barn cleaner come out there so the tractor and manure spitter sat in here um, obviously before this was built in probably 1979 or 80 it was outside at that point but there was Four calf pens. There's one here, one there, there, and up there, and that's where we kept um, the baby calves when they were born. Um, put a cow in there if she was going to have a calf. Um, usually, these two pens here, the first and second ones, were ones that we put the baby calves in, and like three and four were where the cows would go if we needed to have some special attention for having calves. Um, as you see, it's kind of turned into, there used to be two pens here too. There was a pen and then there was a divide. There was two pens in this area and there was one over that trailer's at. Um, these pens were more for the um, bigger calves. Um, the heifers that had, they were probably a couple hundred pounds at that point. They'd be in here um, too. So, but we tore this out pens out when I uh, sold the cows and uh, that one too that one over there usually was for like the big one we used to have a bull we keep a bull in there you got cats crawling around all over the place but we would put the bull over in that pen if we had a bull um and this here obviously is kind of turned into a makeshift makeshift shop at this point I mean that's not even our tractor it's my buddy Lawrence's tractor it's 560s putting that engine in it and it's laying right there but um, I think we split the 560 in here and 300 in here a couple years ago. So one of these days I'm going to get it heated in here so it's warm. It is insulated, but we don't have any heat source at this point. So it was always warm when the calves were in here. It was, you know, warmer than outside, obviously. But now it's kind of a catch-all. You got a bunch of stuff off our corn planter when we bought it fertilizer or uh insecticide boxes and kind of catch everything scrap lumber exhaust system off the pickup truck fencing materials over there so, <clears throat> so here's the milk barn and this is where we all uh use tires to go to die in here you see they're all over the place. Tractor tires, car tires, implement tires. There's the dual wheels off the tractor up there. Um, over here, there was five, five tie stalls. Um, they weren't stanchions. You just had to get up in front of the cows and tie them off. And over here, there was five stanchions. And then up this side, on both sides, there were stanchions that run the whole length. Um, I believe there was let's see was there 32 cows in the barn so there would have been 
what is that? 31, 32. Comes up to 16 cows per side. I think there was, yeah, there was 11 on the long side here and then five here. So yeah, 16 cows per side. Um, in the pipeline, but yeah, when dad sold it, um, there was a guy come in and he took all the stanchions and all the pipeline out of it. I think we have a couple of stanchions left here. Actually, we kept a couple just in case we needed to put beef cattle in here to do some work on. Yeah, I think there's, yeah, there's one, one on each side here yet. So, um, yeah, he come took the pipeline, the stanchions, the whole milking system. Um, the only thing he didn't take was the bulk tank, but we sold that here a couple years ago. The old telephone we had, made a lot of phone calls out of that thing. Still have the breeding records yet. If I open that up. Oh. There we go. Yeah. What do we got here? Let's see. Um, and all the cows' names. This is a July of... That's when the bull was put with the beef cattle in July of 98. Um, let's see. November of 98. I'm not sure when this actually. This would be like 98, this one was. But yeah, there's all, all these back here. There's 90, 1994. kind of cool to see my dad's penmanship yet <laughs> haven't been a while since I've seen that and this is where the walk way was be to go into the boy it's dirty in here jeez uh, more tires look at that um feed room in here sort of, I'm not even gonna open that door because I don't know if it'll shut this is the milk house <sighs> Not much in here anymore at all other than the water heater but you know corn planter drums there's a radiator there's some more corn planter parts yeah there was a milker system used to be right there where you put the milkers at and all that there isn't much in here anymore and a guy come i think it was probably two, three years ago and he bought the bulk tank out of us And uh, this is the feed cart. This thing, I don't know how many, thousands and thousands and thousands of bushels of corn this thing has moved in its life. Um, Dad always talked about, you know, the silo here is 60 foot. And he goes, he wonders how many times he's emptied that silo with a, with a feed scoop. I don't even have a feed scoop around here. There might be one in the... But it's kind of neat to think about that. One hand feed scoop emptying a silo every year in front of the cows here in the manger. Every cow gets their own pile of feed and their own ration. Their ration was hanging off of this wire right here. Each cow got their own special special ration of hay or, uh, I mean, of uh, feed, soybean meal, mineral, all that kind of stuff. Go upstairs here. Oh. Bunch of hay left up there yet. Some of that hay there is probably is older than me. Um, I've never seen this actually emptied, this part of the barn here. So um, I've seen it emptier than this, but um, I would say that there's hay in here that's over 40 years old. I know there is because I've never seen it gone, so... And of course, this is more of a catch-all. Built a ramp up to the old driveway here a couple years ago, so we put some stuff that's light up here. Boat. Want to take a nap? I guess we'll take a nap up here too. Is the mattress? 
excuse me. Got cows here. They got this hay feeder we dad built probably 30 years ago for when we started doing beef cattle. Um, he'd have the beef cattle underneath the lean-to here. We'd feed him hay out of the, out of, actually out of the uh, barn to show you that. It also makes you wonder too how many millions of square bales of hay this barn's seen in 100 years plus. It just, it just baffles my mind. Of course, 100 years ago there wasn't any square bales of hay. It would have been loose hay, but which the track is still up in the barn up there yet. If you look up there, there's still the dolly right there. <clears throat> They'd bring the hay in. Oh, I'm guessing that in the pulleys over there. They bring it in that end there and drop it. The track runs the whole length, but I'm not sure when Dad put that elevator in there. It's always been there. Um, but before they built the the calf shed that's on that end of the barn we were at before, they used to have the elevator would come in up there. There's a door there. They'd run the elevator in there and drop the hay in. So I'm guessing that that isn't as old as I probably think it is an elevator, but <clears throat> yeah, we always know oh, this another thing. So this is that was usually always first crop hay there. Um and then in the drive we here he would put in second crop the straw mow, which is right here, which is getting pretty thin, usually would go to about right, right here, and go up. And then this side, he'd put more hay over here, and then the far end was always like late hay, or hay that got rained on, that he used that for feeding the uh, cat of the calves. That wasn't quite as good high quality. We always fed out of. That mow was always the last one fed out of. The driveway was the first one to get fed out of, so we'd get it emptied out. Um, oh, anyways, how many people have basketball hoops inside their, their hay mow? But, yeah, we do. We've had one forever. Played a lot of basketball up here after the hay gets done out of the driveway. And that's just, hey, this is the feed silo. Um, that's where we always put the ground ear corn. We put shell corn in it now, but um, you used to pull that cart underneath here and roll it out and then go to feeding. And then there was always a, this is the feed room they always had. We had a, a bin in here with soybean meal. Um, used to, before we had the silo here, before we put the silo loader in the silo, We'd grind it out of the corn crib and the grain bin, and we'd pile it up in here with the feed mill, the ground deer corn, and uh, zip it out there. Anyway, um, what else is going to show you? There was obviously, there's a ladder. That's how we usually used to get up in the, in the upstairs, and we there's a hole there. We throw the hay down for that side, and then the hole we climbed up over here was for this side. And then there was always a mow uh, hole in the middle, like there. And there's another one over here too that we throw the straw down, bed the cows with in the winter time. And then I go up to the barn yard here. And then out to the barnyard. They're bossy. No, they don't want to. Don't want to play today. Actually, that one right there probably hasn't got a whole lot of life left because I, she's actually sold. She's a. Uh, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of what you call them now. A heifer and a bull. Were born as twins. Anyway, she's the heifer of the bull uh, out of the two, and she's a. Uh, she can't have. She's like three years old. She's never been bred. I can't think of the name now. 
but uh, my niece and the sister end up actually buying her. She's going to go to market here in a couple of weeks. Um, anyway, that's our 16 by 60. So we put our silage, corn silage, hay silage in, and the bunk feeder there. <clears throat> this feeder here, I was going to tell you that we used to, to and Dad was pretty good about uh, making sure he got good use out of everything that he had, but it's that window, there's that window right there. In this winter time, we would uh, do the chores in the winter time with cows and milk cows. And we would, uh, here, I'm going to show you this too. Was, sorry about that. Oh. This, the door, big back door here, obviously in the winter time, it's a little drafty in here, even with the cows in. Why are you being stubborn? There. Anyway, you see there's a little bit of a gap around there, but they'd always take gunny sacks and stuff them in there all the way around it here, up through there and around, all the way around this thing in the winter time, keep it from staying, keep it warm in here. Obviously you didn't want to have the water pipes freeze. And the barn's still got, you know, it's got the old log um, floor joist in it yet. And then the rock wall here, um, the whole barn used to be that way, but it's this side at one point years ago, they put, they took it out and put in um, brick because it's, must have been falling in. This one here's starting to get a little nasty looking too. It's not terrible. I'm not too worried about falling down at this point, but it's definitely seen better days. Anyway, with this window over here, in the winter time, we would take the get our milk and cows, and we turn the cows out in the uh, barnyard um, to let them eat silage. And then we do the chores in here. We clean the mangers, so we'd scoop up all the feed that they didn't eat in the manger here put it in five gallon buckets and we would haul it with the tractor and loader down to where the beef cattle were at that's just where they're at now down below the house here and we'd feed them in feeders so they get to leftover feed from the cows they didn't eat and then the calves that were out in this lean-to back here we'd scrape up all the hay that didn't get ate we'd fork it over here and we'd throw it out this window right here into this feeder so they'd have all the hay that the cows didn't eat. So we never had, it was, and then we virtually would have zero waste at all when it was all said and done. So so yeah, it was, I guess that's what old farmers did, is they made sure they got everything they needed and didn't have to pay for it. And used everything they had. Um, yeah, there's actually a track here yet. Years ago, there used to be a barn door here. This was closed off, and then this would have been the calf, the calf barn part of it. So that's where all the calves would be after, you know, years ago, um, way before they even built this on out here, I'm pretty sure. So, I guess I better turn the lights off. So I think that's pretty much it on this. Thought I'd maybe show you around in the barn a little bit. Um, not really much to see anymore because there's nothing left in there. Maybe one of those days we'll go over and we'll look at all the machinery that we have. Um, so I guess we'll uh, catch you later. <laughs>